Hello and welcome to an India Today special broadcast on day 37 of the Russia-Ukraine conflict. I'm Gaurav Savant. On day 37, we get you the latest from Kyiv to Kharkiv, from Mariupol to the conflict hit areas in Ukraine. We'll also get to the latest on high octane diplomacy with the US, UK, Russia and China all trying to woo India closer to their camp and India's insistence on an independent foreign policy. Biggest broadcast from the war front. Live and uncompromising reports from Ukraine. Team India today with Ukraine Army snipers. 54 ka hai ye. Wow. <laughs> wow. And range? Range? Kilometer ko Australia. It's called kilometer. A kilometer. Wow. They pushed Putin's men out of Kyiv. Amid massive shelling and bombardment of the Iraqi house, this tank, a Russian tank, uh, that was hit by the Ukrainian side. Fearless reporting amidst the fire. The Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov is on a two-day visit to India. He met Prime Minister Narendra Modi, had extensive interaction with the External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar. And this visit comes at a time when the United States, the United Kingdom and other North Atlantic Treaty Organization countries are very closely watching India's engagement with the West. While Lavrov talked about the historic special strategic ties between India and Russia and said Russia is open to any kind of business with India. The U.S. is watching this trip very closely. The U.S. is very apprehensive about rupee ruble trade and has warned India against this. But the American language has been rather inconsiderate. We get you more on international diplomacy and India at the center of it for now. As the Ukraine war rumbles destructively into its second month, one of Russia's oldest allies, India, has been a constant geopolitical spotlight. What role will India play? Can't India leverage its friendship with Russia to stop the war? Why is India going soft on Putin's invasion? Is India alleviating the impact of Western sanctions on Moscow? Has India aligned itself in a deeply polarized world since Putin's tanks rolled into Ukraine? If there's ever been a week that underscores India's primacy in the order of things, it is this one. Three top politicians spanning the dramatic divide have descended at the same time in Delhi. Each one amplifying an independent relationship, but also pushing some sensitive buttons. It began with US Deputy National Security Advisor Dalip Singh, who made the seemingly callous, intemperate remark lecturing India on how Russia wouldn't step in if China escalated operations at the border. A remark that has been widely derided, including by India's former ambassador to the UN, who labelled it as coercion. Uh, Mr. Dalip Singh uh, has joined the ranks of Mr. Preet Bharara in terms of being one of those uh, persons of Indian origin who takes a dig and uh, successfully tries to rattle India uh, at every opportunity. Who is USA to impose sanctions or consequences on other countries? That right, if at all it is a right, belongs to the United Nations. The abrasive and much derided quip from Biden's man was clearly to try and attack India's relationship with Russia. Underscored today by the arrival of Sergei Lavrov, Putin's very vocal foreign minister and the man doing much of the talking over the Ukraine invasion. Indian foreign policy is characterized by uh, independence and the concentration on real national legitimate interests. The same policy basis uh, exists in the Russian Federation and this makes us as big countries good friends and old partners. India's external affairs minister has previously also hit back at suggestions that India was making missteps by dealing with a belligerent sanctions hit Russia over oil and gas 
post the invasion of Ukraine. What we are seeking to do, whether it is in the context of uh, India or other uh, partners and allies around the world, uh, is to do all we can to see to it that the international community is speaking in unison, speaking loudly against uh, this unjustified, unprovoked, premeditated aggression, uh, calling for an end to the violence. India, as you are aware, has always been in favor of resolving differences and disputes through dialogue and diplomacy. In our meeting today, we will have an opportunity to discuss contemporary issues and concerns in some detail. Another player arriving in India fresh from the smoking chessboard of Ukraine was UK's Foreign Secretary, who has voiced apprehensions about India's role, but played safe. We respect other countries' decisions about uh, the issues that they face. You know, India is a sovereign nation, I'm not going to tell uh, India what to do. The month gone by has also been riddled with condescending commentary from Western think tanks pronouncing India's abdication of strategic duty during the current war. Words that have been responded with contempt by Indian analysts. The truth is, India is a close friend of Russia and has a deepening relationship with the US too. So has the week gone by perhaps highlighted above all that India follows its own foreign policy path and won't be influenced. Bureau Report, India Today. On day 37 of the conflict, the Ukrainian forces appear far more confident and in control of the situation. From Irpin to Bucha to Brory, the access to Kyiv, the Ukrainian forces are now controlling the approach and are consolidating their position. I caught up with some of the scouts and snipers who were active in combat in the past one month. They are now fairly in control and they say they are likely to be relocated to the east where action appears to be intensifying. India Today's Lalit Mohan Joshi and I bring you this India Today exclusive from Kyiv. 37th day of the Russia-Ukraine war in the heart of Kyiv. Snipers, a team of snipers and soldiers enjoying, relaxing, having a cup of coffee. And this gives you an indication of the situation on ground. With, our, with us are some soldiers of the Ukraine army uh, enjoying this cup of coffee. Um, you're a sniper, but, uh, uh, you know, is there no tension right now in Kyiv uh, of a Russian attack? Так, ми гонимо їх отовсюду з України і витіснімо з Криму. Ми заберемо всі свої території, тому що війна у нас іде з ними 8 років. 8. Боле 8 років це наша боротьба чал рі. Хар джага це ми їх багаре. Боле, ай сабі вак тайга, ки Кремія кобі ми ленге, ва сабі їх багаєнге. Хар джага. Але абі абі я хай Київ ми теншін не є. Київ русським ніколи не взяти. Росіян лог Київ ко кабі ви не ле паєнге, кабі ви не. And um, if, if you look around, uh, uh, you know, while there are a lot of soldiers here, but life also appears to be coming back to normal. There are a lot more vehicles on the road. Uh, some shops are also opening. It, it is an indication that on day 37 and the smiles on their faces, you are smiling, you are smiling. That's an indication that uh, they're on top of the situation. Me. لڑنے <laughs> Выполняем любые задачи, мы все мобильные, мы не только снайпера, а мы мобильные ребята, можем... So if you if you just look, uh, can can we just show you a weapon? Uh, this is the sniper rifle. Uh, it's an old Soviet era uh, rifle. Uh, Seven point six two mm is the cartridge. The range is almost a kilometer, 
and uh, the the soldiers say uh, the uh, soldiers of the Ukraine army if you look at the insignia uh, this is this is the sniper unit uh, uh, which is deployed on ground but right now they say they are extremely confident because they've had success in um, in neutralizing the threat not just here in Kyiv but also on the outskirts of Kyiv now they are they are relaxing uh, they are out for a cup of coffee because reinforcements have come in additional weapons and systems have come in and the russian forces have withdrawn uh, from around kiev and are said to be moving towards belarus uh, ukrainian forces are now digging in for better protection in the days and weeks ahead with cameraman lalit mohan joshi in kiev ukraine gorov savant for india today there is relative peace in kiev there are more vehicles on the streets some shops have opened people have come out of their homes russia has indicated that it will de escalate as a confidence building measure and not target kiev and cherny hive but ukraine's president zelensky sees this as the lull before the storm the forces are on high alert and there is an apprehension that in the days and weeks ahead if these talks do not succeed then russia will target not just other parts of ukraine but also the capital kiev as a confidence building measure russia may have announced de escalation in the targeting of kiev and cherny hive but other parts of ukraine continue to be in the line of russian missile and rocket fire in fact the ministry of defense in russia has released images of specific targeting of military installations and strategic targets in other parts of ukraine we bring you this special report identify track demolish two days after announcing de-escalation and claiming to have withdrawn troops from the capital city of kiev russia continues its onslaught the four videos released by the russian ministry of defense reveal the ferocity of the assault on ukrainian forces Video 1 shows the destroyed battery of Ukraine's S300 anti-aircraft missile system. The entire site has been reduced to rubble. No signs of human life. Only war machines destroyed by Moscow. S300 is a long-range surface-to-air missile system. It was said to be a game changer in Ukraine. but the footage paints a different picture video 2 reveals the russian air power and its air superiority over ukraine footage shows the crew of the panzer anti aircraft missile and cannon complex video shows russia promptly detecting and destroying a ukrainian unmanned aerial vehicle debris of the unmanned drone is then seized by the russian forces the third video shows a special military operation conducted by the russian armed forces moscow is repeatedly striking the military infrastructure and equipment of ukraine Video 4 released by Kremlin shows KA-52 helicopters of the Russian Aerospace Forces destroying fortified strongholds and firing positions of armored vehicles of Ukraine. After 6 rounds of talks there was hope that Russia would de-escalate. But Moscow continues to rain missiles on key Ukrainian cities. Bureau report India today 
On India Today, we bring you all sides of the story. India Today's foreign affairs editor Geeta Mohan flew to Moscow and from there to Mariupol. Donetsk and Luhansk, both well and truly in Russian control, while the Ukrainian forces have launched a multiple series of attacks to regain some of the lost territory. Russian forces are now in Mariupol and Geeta Mohan travelled to Mariupol to bring us this report. to Mariupol again because there is fresh development. Mariupol, most of Mariupol at a strategic level is under the control of Russian forces but battle is ongoing at a tactical level. So we will have to go and see how things are panning out for the forces on both sides. But important to here is to note the, the, the announcement by the Foreign Ministry of Russia that uh, they have agreed to a humanitarian corridor for civilians not just on this side where we were reporting from for civilians to come out of uh, Mariupol into Donetsk but also from Mariupol into Zapor uh, Zaporizhia which is on the other side. So we'll go and see and, and, and assess the situation on the ground. Things are difficult, life is difficult. Uh, Alex with me, Maurizio an Italian journalist also with us. Uh, we have Satya and we have Ruslan who is uh, primarily will be driving us around. Right now, Alex is doing that for us. But Alex, um, in terms of the situation on the ground, humanitarian corridor, but uh, even in Donetsk right now, because of the water plants that were hit by Russian forces, it seems like we're going to face a lot of water problems. Uh, the water plant was hit by Ukrainians and they did it uh, uh, by their plan. They need to close water for the region here to make problems. That is their tactics as we see. Uh, about humanitarian corridor, we're gonna see it maybe in Mariupol today. Do you have water in where you live? I No, my uh, flat now is out of water and we wait uh, water in two weeks when the repairing will be finished. So uh, we are also, we are not out of water in our hotel, but we are out of heating. So, uh, for people like us who come from India, it is uh, it is cold. But the heating, like Alex says, was announced earlier because in this part of the world, they normally stop heating the places by April, by by March, April. Um, so middle of April. Mid April, but this time they've already announced because of the situation that they're going to stop heating a little earlier. That's in the first week. Uh, of April, which is why most probably the heating is stopped. But if water plants are affected, all the heating, even if you have gas, all the heating happens with water in the homes, in hotels. And that's why if water plants are affected, even if they wanted to give us heating, they really cannot. Uh, so that's a problem that we're facing now. Let me now get you the latest from the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Ukrainian forces claim that the Russian forces that had occupied the Chernobyl nuclear power plant have now vacated the area. There are reports that seem to suggest that some of the Russian soldiers who were in control of Chernobyl were impacted adversely by high degree of radiation from the contaminated site. Some soldiers were unwell. They were rushed out in an ambulance and there could be an adverse impact on others who took them to Belarus. While the veracity of this report hasn't been independently verified, we bring you more details as given by the Ukrainian forces. Is this the lull before the storm in Kiev? There are no air raid sirens, no aircraft, no incoming missiles. But the apprehension is if peace talks do not succeed, then the worst is yet to come. We will continue to track developments on the story very closely, but that is all I have for you on this special broadcast. Many thanks for watching.